this morning and the pleasure of just introducing the prayer time. And as I pondered upon this, I, I just sensed in my heart, you know, the cotton theme is our weapons are not carnal. they mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. That's the, the whole theme. And when you read the notes, they're saying there that the weaponry worldwide, the political situations worldwide, I mean, there's a nation, if you're watching the news this week, declared themselves a nuclear nation this week. It's happening. The stage has been set right in front of our eyes. And um, as we pray this morning, so, you know, I realized that there's two role players here. It's us, the church, and it's the world. That's the two role players. And us, the church, are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we've got the truth of the word, etc. So... I just want to speak for a few minutes this morning before Rob and Keith take us through the actual prayer points. And I thought, well, it be, do you mind if I come down here? It feels a bit, feels a bit too up there this morning. Um, I just felt this morning, you know, when we did the book of James, we, we, we read of Elijah, and, and, and if you remember, it said, a man with a nature like ours, you know, fearful, whatever, a nature like ours, but he prayed fervently, and it didn't rain on the earth for three years. And as I considered, you know, that journey of Elijah, and I just sort of immersed myself in his life for that time, I thought about it. And I realized, you know, he had a word from God. He heard God. And he went with that word. He had a job to do and he did it. And the first thing was God said to him, you know, now the, the, because Ahab is king and because my people are being wicked and because my people are going off to other gods and they not doing what I've called them to do here comes some consequences and here came a drought can I just get a sip there please and um, so here came a three year drought so God said to Elijah go to the brook Cherith and stay there you'll drink water out of the brook and in the morning, the ravens will bring you bread and meat. And in the evening, the ravens will do the same. Can you imagine that? Imagine living like that, supernatural, at a brook. You've got a word on your heart and you're obeying the word and you've got a job to do. We've got a job to do as well. And then eventually the brook dried up. And then God said to him, now you're going to go through to Zarephath. And you're going to meet a widow there. And I've commanded her to provide for you. And I thought to myself, Lord, you, you commanded a widow. And I mean, we know the story. She was collecting twigs and she was making her last meal and, and, and she's going to die and you've commanded her. I mean, you know, God could have commanded the king, but he commanded a widow. And I started, you know, as I immersed myself in that, I started to realize it's not our things that we bring along with us and the provisions. We don't need that. It's our hearts being available to do that work. And God supernaturally provides in everything. So, if there's someone out there this morning you're saying, well, that's, you know, I'm, I'm, my provisions are a bit low. We serve a supernatural God, let me tell you that. And then, you know the story, so this widow, she was making, collecting some sticks, so Elijah said, what are you doing? She said, well, I'm going to make a fire. I've got a jar here with a bit of flour in it, and I've got a bowl with a bit of oil. I'm going to make a bread, and then we're going to eat it, and then my son and I, and then we're going to die. And I'm thinking, now, Lord, you've commanded her to provide for Elijah. So he says to her, can you make me a cake first? <laughs> can you imagine that? So she says, but I, you know, this." he says, well, the word of the Lord is this, that that, that that flour will not diminish and that oil will not run out until the rain comes. See, until the provision comes, until the spirit falls, it will not run out. And it didn't, and it didn't. And then he had to go on. Then God said to him, now it's time to go and confront the king. And then Obadiah and, he, and Ahab had gone into different areas and Obadiah was like afraid because you know, he met Elijah and he said, tell the king I'm here. He said, if I go and tell him you're here and, then, and he comes and then you've gone to another place, I'm dead. So I'm, I'm scared. Elijah said, no, I'll be here. And then Ahab came and then when Ahab saw him, he said, what have you come to do here, you trouble of Israel? He said, no, 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 you're the trouble of Israel. What are you doing? The wickedness, etc., etc., etc. Now bring all those prophets of Baal. Bring those, those who serve the Asherahs and bring them here to Mount Carmel. And that's what I just want us to focus on this morning. So they did that. And those priests of Baal, etc., etc., and those other guys, you, you know the story. They, they cut themselves. They danced. They did religious stuff. They did stuff. And the word says, nobody answered them. 
Nobody answered them. They did a whole lot of religious stuff and nobody answered them. Then Elijah said to the guys, get 12 rocks, one to represent each tribe. And I want us just to see the significance of that this morning. He established and he repaired the altar. And I just believe this morning in this house, the prayer altar is gonna be established and set from here on out, like never before. And, and I'm so excited what I see happening up on the stage. It's already happening and I haven't even said it yet. So they did that and then they took the bull and they prepared exactly as God had showed them to. But then when Elijah prayed, notice what he prayed. He said, Lord, at your word, I've gone and declared all this I've done. He says, and you have turned the hearts of your people to you. That's what he prayed. And the word says, and then the fire fell. And then the fire, he didn't pray for fire. He, he thanked God for turning the hearts of people and there, therein lies the key. So this morning I just felt as the introduction to prayer. I mean, we could jump into the prayer right now and we will shortly. But I just felt this morning as a body, we have an invitation this morning from God. And, 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 it, and it is this, to present our hearts before him. You know, Proverbs 4.23 says, guard your heart with all diligence. That's, that's a good thing to do. For out of it flow the issues of life. We've got to guard our hearts. I tell you, there's so much stuff out there screaming at us that wants a place in my heart. We've got to guard it. And then the fire fell. And I, and I just realized, you know, like when John said at that river, one's coming after me far greater than I, and he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. It's that fire this morning that I'm talking about. It's, it's that anointing of Holy Spirit this morning that I, did, that I sense, you know. And last week when Marius shared, he touched on spirit. And he said, remember he took us to Acts 2, and he said that upper room prayer meeting, it's, they were together in one accord and in prayer. And suddenly... It was the sound as of a mighty rushing wind and tongues of fire upon their heads. If we look at Peter in the prison in Acts, it says constant prayer was being offered up to God for him by the church. And suddenly, chains fall off, doors open, boom, 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 and he finds himself walking in the street. A little further on, Paul and Silas are in a similar situation. They're in a Philippian jail. They are worshiping, they are praying. And then there's another earthquake, and boom, doors open and chains fall off. And the jailer, not only gets born again that night, but at midnight, him and his family get baptized. Supernatural stuff. And, and I ask myself, can we live like that? And if not, I mean, we, we can. If, if we aren't, why aren't we? And, then I, and, I, and I just sense, you know, and Marius touched on it as well last week, and I just want to go back there. And that's the anointing of Holy Spirit. That's that fire of Holy Spirit. And I want to stand here this morning just to represent us and say, Lord, here I am. Bring my heart this morning. And here we are. We're standing in your presence. And we've got... Limited, limited capabilities, etc. But I thank you that in you, you know, as your spirit indwells us and fills us, we can do mighty exploits. We can impact a city and a nation. Even in John 7, verse 37 and 38, it says the following, On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. For the Christian, it's not so much, being filled with the Spirit is not so much about something outside of yourself coming in. For the Christian, being filled with the Spirit is about who's inside of you and allowing Him to come out. Amen. Heavenly Father, this morning, I bring before you the whole of this church, every single person, from the oldest right down to the youngest baby. I pray for the leaders. I pray for the elders. I pray, my God, that they will be so focused on you that they will not miss a single thing that you are saying, Lord. I pray, my God, that there will be a hearing that will take place and that there will be a doing that will take place. And my God, I don't pray it only for them. I pray it for the whole congregation. Lord, I pray that right now, every single 
person in this building will be touched by you. Lord, I pray that a spirit of prayer be birthed within every heart, that there will be a, an upgrade in what we are doing, in what we are saying, in the way we are living. Lord, I pray that a deep, deep work will be done within every heart. If there is anybody here, Lord, this morning who has not yet come to Jesus as Savior, oh Lord, may it be today. May it be today, Lord. Let a deep, deep work be done. Lord, I pray if we look that as we look at a, a heap of coals, those that are burning brightly, Lord, blow the Holy Spirit on them that they will flame will rise higher. Those who have grown to a place where there's only a little bit of a flicker, Lord, my God, touch them. Oh, Lord, let there be a strong, powerful touch upon them that they will start burning for you. And my God, those who have fallen along the way, where the coals have grown totally cold and dead, Oh my God, I know your desire is to bring them in, to put life into them. So therefore I ask my God if there are people like this here today that they will come to you, Lord. My God, that they will bow their knee before you, will cry out to you, and I know you will meet with them. I pray that every single one will be baptized in the Holy Spirit, Lord, so that there will be boldness, there will be power that will flow through each one, Lord. My God, and when we consider that we hear about nuclear nations, Lord, then it seems as though it's not such a distant possibility that we might come to a place where we start facing persecution. And I pray that every single one of us will come to a place where we'll decide what are we going to do? Are we going to stand for Jesus no matter what? What happens? Is Jesus enough in us? Is his value not greater than the value of our own lives? Lord, when I think of Daniel, he was a young teenager and he resolved that he will live a pure life, that he will walk with you, that he will remain faithful unto you. And until he was an old man, Lord, we know that day when the law was made that everybody had to only pray to the statue of gold. He, as he was used to doing, knelt three times a day in his upper room with the windows open towards Jerusalem and he prayed. He knew this could cause his death, but he did it because he was faithful to you. Oh Lord, I pray that every single one of us will dare to be a Daniel. I pray for the teenagers. I pray for the children in the children's church. Lord, they are here hearing the gospel. I thank you that a pure gospel is being preached in this church right down to the little children too. And I pray, Lord, work in their hearts, my God. Lord, when I think of the pressure that there is on teenagers today, the things that even little children are being exposed to at school, the, sp the peer pressure that there is on the teenagers, Lord, make them strong in you, that they will not veer away from the path that you have placed before them because you have got a destiny you've got a plan for every single one of us and Lord may we not veer away from that path if anybody has gone to one side of it to the left or to the right Holy Spirit I pray stir our hearts right now and take us back to that perfect road that leads to the destiny that you have planned for us I ask this in Jesus name Amen Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Father, for your word. When Jesus went to war, he went to war with your word. It is written. And your word says that the warfare is not carnal. It's not in our own strength. 
but it is mighty through God, through his word, to the pulling down of strongholds. So we thank you today that you're a faithful, loving, kind father, full of righteousness and justice. And your word, it is written in Psalm 89, 13 and 14 that says, your arm is endued with power. Your hand is strong. Your right hand exalted. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. So we declare, Jesus, you are our center, our source and hope. You are the pillar upon which we are founded. And your word declares in Isaiah 55, 11, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It shall accomplish what I please. It will prosper in the thing I send it. So we do not have to fear. You are a sovereign God of the universe and your word declares that you are omnipotent, you are omniscient, you are omnipresent. Your word declares in Isaiah 43, 13, we declare this day into the heaven and upon the earth that it is written, even from eternity, I am he and there is none who can deliver from my hand. I act, who can reverse it? We acknowledge your omnipotent power here today with us upon the earth and in the heavens. And again, it is written in Psalm 147.5, great is our Lord. He is abundant in strength. His understanding is infinite. God, you are all knowing. You know our past, our future, and there's nothing that you are unaware of in the world that we live in today because it is written in the beginning of Genesis and the end of Revelations. So we trust confidently in your ability to rule and to reign in Jesus' name. In Jeremiah 23, 24, it is written, who can hide in secret places? So I cannot see them, declares the Lord. Do I not fill the heavens and earth, declares the Lord? We acknowledge your omnipresence with us. And again, your word declares in Proverbs 15, 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding good and evil. So we want to declare today and confess our passion for the King and his kingdom, Jesus Christ. We thank you that your word declares, now thanks be to God, that you cause us to triumph in Christ Jesus. So there is no evil that we will not triumph over. You take every evil and you bring good out of it. And we declare over our body today, over our city and over our country, Romans 8.28, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Psalm 54.5, he will recompense the evil of my foes. Destroy them in your faithfulness. So we do not have to fear. As we stand before you this day, we want to declare our faith is in you, in your ability, in your destiny and purpose for this world. And you foreknew from the beginning of time. So we thank you. Nothing, absolutely nothing can stand in the way of what you have purposed to do in our lives, in this city, in this province, in this country. We thank you for your word. We thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you that you are our Father and our God. As you remember 9-11 today, and look at the world that is in turmoil, nation fighting against nation, and using weapons that are not natural, but extremely sophisticated against each other. But your word declares in 2 Corinthians 10:4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down of strongholds. But in the midst of all this, we declare 1 Timothy 4.10, for this we labor and strive because we have fixed our hope on the living God, who is the savior of all men, especially of believers. We place our confidence in you, our living God, knowing you have our best interests at heart. For our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against powers, against the world forces of darkness, against the spiritual forces in heavenly places. Thank you, Father God. We are more than conquerors 
through you, most high God, who loves us. Thank you, Father, that your spirit is already accomplishing what we cannot accomplish in the natural. Father, we thank you. As Father, we ask you to protect our leaders of our church. Give them the mind of Christ. May your church be a place of solace where Jesus is our source, where Jesus is our center and our hope. Father, we pray that we will not lose heart amongst the sadness and the lack of hope around us. But Father, we petition you to increase our passion for you, uh, your, uh, your, for you, for you and, as your creation. Knowing you loved us, your creation, so much that you gave your son Jesus to die for us. We know your kingdom is established on righteousness and justice. And we pray using these weapons of loving kindness and truth to defeat the enemy. Father, we thank you that, you are, that we are strong in your might, empowered by your Holy Spirit. We can pull down strongholds that you may be glorified, lifted up, and acknowledged as the true God, the Father of us all. Lord God, we boldly put on your armor and come against the chaos, the confusion, and the satanic attacks. You are our God, and you will lead us into victory. We pray for all the saints, for a boldness to declare your name, and watch as you manifest yourself against the enemy. In the name of our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Yes, Lord, name above all names. Jesus, Son of the living God, we lift up your name, Lord, and declare that you alone, you are God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for what you've done in this place, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that everything that you do has got purpose, Father God. You have planned this day. You have planned where we are standing today. And you have planned this nation, Father God, to be at the tip of Africa, Father God. And we thank you for what you are doing in South Africa. And we thank you that we are on this continent of Africa, Father God. And the influence that will come from here of what you are doing will spread from here right to Egypt, Father God, in the precious name of Jesus. Yes. And we take this opportunity, Father God, to pray for our president, Cyril Ramaphosa. And we thank you, Father God, that you empower him, Father God, with knowledge from above, Father God. God, and that you surround him with people that will speak into his life, Father God, and encourage him. We thank you for every person that you have placed in Parliament, and we thank you, Father God, that they have been strategically placed, your children, Father God, that they will be effective where they are. We thank you, Lord, that you just give them a boldness, Father God, to declare Jesus to everybody who they come in contact with, Father God. We thank you for what you are doing, and we we thank you, Father God, for every person that is in municipalities around this country, Father God. And we thank you for the mayors and councillors. And we thank you, Father God, that you will strengthen us and empower us to be effective, Father God, in what you have purposed for us. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that as you have purposed, Father God, so it will be, Father, that South Africa will become the bread basket of Africa, Father God, that you will prosper us and make us bold and effective for the work of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I was asked to pray for our city, the beautiful East London. And when I look around me, I can find fault with his land. But God has given us the task to stand in the gap. Um, Second Chronicles 7 verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land or their city. So Lord, this morning we come before you. We thank you, Lord, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us weapons that work. Lord Ezekiel said, I was looking for someone. I was looking for a man to stand in the gap, and I could find, find none. Lord, the Lord Jesus, when he was riding on the donkey, 
and the people were celebrating him and throwing their clothes and worshipping. But Jesus looked upon Jerusalem and I want to say this morning, Jesus is looking over his London and he's weeping over our city. This morning I pray, Lord, that we will not be indifferent to our city, that you will stir up a love in us for our city. Lord, that we will stand in the gap and we will call out to heaven and we will pray and call for revival over our city. Lord, because when you come, we will have liberty and freedom in the city. Father God, we thank you that you have a plan and a purpose for the city of East London. And it's a good plan. It's a plan to prosper us, to give us a future and a hope. Lord, this morning, I decree an open heaven over the city of East London. We release revelation and truth to set the captives free according to John 8 verse 32. Lord, I pray this morning for a release of the fear of the Lord over our city. Let the love of God be poured out through the Holy Spirit. I pray that people will encounter the Heavenly Father. We cry out for revival this morning. We pray, Father God, and we declare an end to hopelessness. I speak new opportunities and restoration to those who have suffered great loss and hardship over the last couple of years. Lord, I pray that you move in the lives of government officials and educators so that they may know your will. I pray that you give them wisdom and spiritual understanding. We pray that those in authority will work, walk worthy of you, that they will be fruitful in every good work and increase in the knowledge of you. I pray that you give them divine strategies and inspired ideas to get around the obstacles that we are facing. I pray that they will govern with righteousness and justice in Jesus' name. We declare blessing and increase, raises and promotions over your people. We pray recovery of losses, divine connections, favor and restoration of every individual in East London. We pray that pastors, ministry leaders and business leaders be kingdom minded above all else. I pray for release of the breath of God to bring revival, renewal, restoration and transformation. We declare these things in the name that is above every other name. We thank you Lord that you cause these things to be established so that your light will shine upon our ways in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Father God, thank you for the privilege of being able to know you. Thank you for your love, God. Thank you that you gave your son to die on the cross for our sins so that we could have an abundant life. Forgive us, Lord, where we have forgotten what you have done for us. Forgive us for trying to solve all our problems on our own when you have already paid the price for it. Lord, we surrender our lives to you today. We surrender to the plans that you have for us, plans to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us a future and a hope, not my will, Lord, but yours. Father God, let us recognize that the same power that raised Jesus from the grave lives in us, that we are no longer slaves to our sin, but that we have been redeemed. Lord, in every circumstance that we face, let us remember that we are children of God, that we are more than conquerors. Thank you, Lord, that you have made us the head and not the tail, that you are above and not beneath. God, help us to hear your voice, to do what it is that you called us to do in the spaces that you have placed us. Lord, that when we walk into work, into school, into our communities, Lord, that those around us will recognize you in us, that our lives reflect who you are. Thank you that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but that you have given us a spirit of love, of power, and a sound mind. 
Today, Lord Jesus, I pray your blood over all fear, anxiety, and depression. Today, I rebuke the attempts of the enemy to make us small. I pray that, Lord, that you will feel your power in every area of our lives, that we will not be able, that we will be able to stand firm in the knowledge that you have got our backs, that no matter what happens to us, no matter what happens around us, Lord, that we will not be shaken. I thank you, Father God, for joy, for your peace, and your love. I pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, it is such a privilege to be able to come before you and stand in the gap on behalf of the mountain of the business and the economy, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, O oh Father, that we can present ourselves to you knowing, we come to you in faith, knowing that you are a God who answers prayer. And Father, we trust you. We trust that all our prayers that we, 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 we send up to you this morning will be heard by you. Father God, first of all, I want to bring repentance. We repent on behalf of our, 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 our country for the corruption. Oh, Father, that has become so endemic, oh, Father. We pray, oh, God, for those, even in the, you know, the perception is that government is corrupt, but private sector fuels corruption. Father, we come before you and we ask of you, we bring repentance for the greed on this mountain of the economy and business. We repent, oh, God, oh, Lord, for greed in the name of Jesus. Forgive us, oh, God. Forgive our leaders, oh, Father, God. Oh, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that righteousness would arise on this mountain oh God in Jesus mighty name we pray that you raise up laborers to go into the harvest of the mountain of business and the economy oh God in the mighty name of Jesus we pray oh God for the disunity oh God amongst our political leaders oh Father God oh Lord that hampers development oh God in the mighty name of Jesus God your word says that we must call to you and you will answer and show us great and unsearchable things we do not know. So in this morning hour, oh God, we call to you, oh Father. We call to you. We bring our, our country, our province and our city to you, oh God. And we ask, dear Father, have your way. Have your way in our nation, oh Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Father God, we pray that you uproot every unrighteous leader in the name of Jesus. Oh Father, we pray that you remove, oh God, red tape, bureaucracy. Oh, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we commit our supply chain to you, oh God. Oh, Father, where the root of corruption is. Oh, Father God, we pray. Oh, Father, that you raise your righteous leaders, your righteous officials, your righteous administrators in supply chain, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that the money, oh, Father God, oh, Father God, oh, Lord, that the money will be destined for what it is supposed to be destined for, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, we want to say thank you. Thank you that there are pockets of excellence in some of these departments. Thank you, dear Father, that our SEZ on the West Bank is one of the best SEZs in the country. We thank you, dear Father. We want to declare, oh God, prosperity over our city. We want to declare, oh God, we want to believe your report, oh God, for our city, our province, and our nation. We want to declare, oh God, we want to thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. We want to declare and claim prosperity, oh God, over this nation. We want to declare that the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. We claim, oh God, that righteousness, oh God. We claim, oh Father, prosperity over our nation in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for a spirit of excellence to arise. Oh, Father God, that our leaders in our various departments, oh God, in our various, oh God, oh Lord, sectors of the economy, oh God, would serve with excellence of spirit, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, we declare your will be done, your kingdom come over this mountain of the business and the economy, oh God. Oh, Lord, we pray for new God ideas. We don't want good ideas, oh God. We want God ideas. We want you to download to 
to us your strategies, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we want to pray for a new supernatural intelligence to arise, oh God. Oh Lord, over the leaders of the city, of the nation, of the province, oh Father. <coughs> In the mighty name of Jesus, we call forth young people to arise on this mountain of business and the economy. We pray for young entrepreneurs to arise. We pray, dear God, for a re-engineering re of our education system so that we can raise up people, oh Father God, oh Lord, that have the skill, oh God, who become to become economically independent, oh Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh Father God, we declare that Jesus Christ reigns over the city. We want to declare that Jesus Christ reigns over the province of the Eastern Cape. We want to declare that Jesus Christ reigns over the country of South Africa. We want to declare that Jesus Christ reigns over the continent of Africa. And Father, we thank you. Thank you that South Africa, O oh Lord, has still yet to arise into her fullness. We call it forth, O oh God. We call it forth. South Africa is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I pray, dear God, that this country would yield, O oh Father God, O oh Lord, fullness, O oh God, for you, for your glory, God, only for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Um, I'd like to share something that God had put in my heart. Um, not only this morning, but um, it was a scripture he had sent me, he had given me when he sent me here. Um, and that scripture is Isaiah 55 verse 5. And that scripture speaks of God saying that nations will come that you don't know of. And nations that you know of will come to this place because of the splendor and the glory of the Lord that is going to fall on this place. Many nations come here every Friday. You may not see it. There's young people, scores, who come through those doors. There's many of us who are new, who have come to this place because God is pouring out his splendor and his glory into this place. Do not take it for granted. There is something God is doing and he's going to start it here at CCA. He's starting it here. There's many young people who have come because God has called us here in this place nations you know not of and nations you know of and God is saying let's make fruit that resembles him seed according to our own kind seeds according to our own kind making us disciples Thank you. That's all I want to share. Thank you. Sorry, I, this wasn't planned. Um, that really provoked me. And I've been thinking about this for the last half hour. Would you agree with me? I want to pray for this generation. Father, we lift up the young. Lord, um, we pray today that this generation, Father, from late teens to late twenties, Father, this generation, even early thirties, Lord, we pray that they would stand up in Jesus' name. We, Lord, Lord, we pray that they would um, have an endowment of boldness, Father, that you would just pour boldness onto them that would stand up. The things that you're speaking into their hearts, Lord, let them lead us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, let them stand up and lead us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, those of us that are older, those of us that have wisdom of years, Lord, may we recognize, give us discernment, Lord. May we pour our lives into them, what you've poured into us, Lord. May we give them room. Open the doors, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.